Melanin, yes. That's the same pigment that gives the brown eggs that you go to the grocery store and get. Well, actually, it's, it's poor for me. I'm sorry, that's not melanin. But melanin gives you the pigment of the Matty H's fungi. Okay, the shifting gears, a little different animal here. Yes, this is a punch biopsy on the molar skin. And on low power, I just saw a lot of spindle cells um, that were kind of mixed in top to bottom. Um, okay. So spindle uh, cell, do you yeah. think it was inflammatory or neoplastic? So I thought it was more neoplastic. Good. Um, what kind of differentiation? Well, so I was going down the endothelial cell pathway because of a lot of blood vessels. But vascular it was, pathway. Vascular, yeah. Good. Um, I didn't think it was super bloody, so I kind of went through like um, Kaposi's versus Angiosarc. Okay. And so you thought it was malignant? I did, yeah, I did think it was. So were you able to use the classic criteria for benign and malignant in this? Um, yeah, I, I think so, because I think that it's... Well, wait a minute. It's not well we circumscribed. we got a punch. Sure, so, we've got a punch biopsy. So we can't really assess breath, symmetry, circumscription. You can't talk about force. Yeah, actually, you can't talk about circumscription. You're right, I think. It goes to the side, the base, mm -hmm. and the side. Mm -hmm. So of the, arc, of the cardinal features, you got to only use one. So... That's one of the reasons we like to get representative biopsies of things, so we can use all of the features wherever possible. Here we can only use one of those three, so that's helpful, at least. So we're very poorly circumscribed, top to bottom, side to side, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. vascular. So now you're going to have to rely on other things, right? Yes. So I thought that it was um, unsunday skin. Good. I didn't see hair follicles in here. Um, no, you're right. There's not. So any. I didn't. I couldn't really place body location other than sun damage and non ankle. Um, and from there, I just went capsies versus angiosarc. Okay. And how do you tell those two apart? Because it, it's usually not too tough. You look for a promontory sign, which I'm not great at. You can look for free floating little bits of uh, vessels. I think in inside the lumens. Did, you mean in cells? cells? Did you see that? Uh, I think it. Yeah. <laughs> look at that right yeah. there. There's one there. There's another. And look how atypical the cell is floating through in there. It's actually in mitosis. Mm -hmm. This looks fast. It's got a very sweet morphic morphology. So these cells are very atypical floating through. What about the morphology of the blood vessels? What's the shape of these blood vessels? Dilated, atypical? They're dilated. Um, they're irregular in their size and shape, and they kind of have almost a staghorn morphology. That's one of the classic features of an angiosarcoma, <coughs> the sort of staghorn features. And notice that there's not a lot of fascicles of spindle cells. And there aren't spindle cells surrounding pre existing normal blood vessels, like you said before, which is the promontory sign that you see in KS. So this is just kind of diffuse, dissecting vascular neoplasm with atypical cells. So this is an angiosarcoma. I presume that's what you figured out it was, right? Yes. Good. Excellent. Now, there is a type of lymph angioma that is KS, but it's pretty rare, and it does not have this. If you see these cells floating freely in very atypical endothelial cells lining the vessels, that's very, very suggestive of angiosarc. So angiosarcoma. Now, there's several different types of angiosarcoma. If you were going to, like, Subtype this, what would you call this? Very well differentiated, poorly differentiated, or moderately differentiated, or epithelioid. Oh. I, I think this is well differentiated. It, it, is. Tell it's it, is, it is well differentiated. Yeah. Now, if you didn't have these atypical cells here, sometimes these can be very difficult to tell from just garden variety hemangiomas. And if you get a shade biopsy of something like this, I mean, it's almost impossible. Yeah. You're dead in the water. Okay. And I've seen people send shades in for angiosarc. Mm. A punch is not great. It's better than nothing. If you're going to send a punch of something like this, it should always come with a picture. A picture should, should accompany this. It's, this can easily be misdiagnosed if you just send a blind punch in the middle of a sea of a red plaque on somebody's scalp. <coughs> And that's the most common, one of the most common presentations. These are, these are a couple different presentations. Obviously, you've got the 
Stewart trees type with lymphedema. You've got these other types of kind of like bruises on the head and neck area. That one on the bottom right was calling a nodule. It'd be hard to recall that an angiosarc is looking at it clinically. That could be that might be an epithelioid one if it works looked at histologically. So we got some information about angiosarcoma. So anyway, just uh, remember that it's it, 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 I, it's something like this we probably call it, but this is a soft tissue tumor, and you probably would get a, a recommendation to take an incisional biopsy to confirm the diagnosis, because these are serious tumors, obviously. Okay. Okay, so this was um, a little challenging for me. I saw that there were lots of spindle cells okay. um, within the dermis. Um, so I thought about um, melanocytic differentials, but then I thought I saw some fascicles. Um, so I went down the nerve um, pathway, and maybe I think I saw them probably on higher power because I want to appreciate them right now. Um, Good, so spindle cell neoplasm, fascicles. It could be melanocytic. You can get spindle cell nevi, right? So it's possible. Nevo melanocytic is a really good idea. Did you think it's benign or malignant? A benign. Yeah, it's very seemingly small. It's a dome shaped papule, very symmetrical based on what we have here. Um, so I thought about um, a traumatic neuroma, um, but the, the clefting isn't too prominent. Um, yeah, you usually get a lot of more fibroplasia in that. There's a little bit here. But you get a lot of nerve twigs that are sort of <clears throat> irregular and somewhat bizarre and various size and shape and mixed with a lot of scar tissue in that. And this is a more kind of a nodular neoplastic process. I agree with you. It's just got some, maybe some <coughs> nests and fascicles of spindle cells with some collagen interspersed. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about um, polysating um, capsid neuroma as well, but... It didn't fit perfectly with that either. Yeah. Um, Good. There's really no clefting. It's a kind of solid nodular lesion. Yeah. Um, and then I thought about it didn't really fit with schwannoma either. Um, and then the other thing I wrote was um, neurothecoma. Yeah, neurothecoma. Okay. Um, and there's two types of that entity. Mm -hmm. um, so the cellular type. Of yeah. Mixoid. And that's actually what this is. Well, it's good that you were able to think about that. That can sometimes be kind of confusing if you haven't seen it before. Cells are pretty nondescript. They do have the, uh, called neurothecoma, because theek means nests. And there are some cells here that are kind of arranged in some little nest-like aggregations here. They often do have kind of a trabecular pattern with some uh, collagen bundles between the individual aggregations. Sometimes you can get some mitotic figures and some atypicality. I've seen these be misdiagnosed as melanoma before. See, there's a mitotic figure right there. So if you wanted to stain this, let's say you really weren't 100% sure of the diagnosis, what kind of stains would you do on um, You can do S100 stain. And would it be positive or negative? Um, negative. Yeah, it is negative. I think S100 A6 is positive. Mm -hmm. I've never ordered that in my life. Oh, okay. I probably won't start. <laughs> But there's another stain that is positive in this. Um, I'm not sure which that one. Anybody know? It's NKIC3. NKIC3, or also known as a CD63 stain. That's positive in this lesion. So basically that's what it is. They're kind of nondescript lesions. This is a clinical photo of one, but it's kind of weird. I've never seen one look like this. They usually look more like kind of reddish papules that are sort of dome-shaped. They're often on the head and neck area. This this one's they probably shaved it or traumatized it or something. They don't usually, they're not usually ulcerated like that. So anyway, they're benign. The most important thing is just don't over-diagnose them as melanoma or malignancy because they're sometimes it doesn't make it count. I have seen a couple of these be malignant in the past, but they're really rare for them to be malignant. Okay. All right. All right. I have a punch biopsy, nonvolar scan. Uh, in the dermis, there is kind of these like fascicles of um, more another spindle cell uh, type. 
it's called a neoplasm. Yeah. Do you think it's benign or malignant? Uh, I think it's benign. Yeah, it seems like this is probably the whole thing. It's small and pretty well circumscribed. What about uh, differentiation? Um, I was thinking nerve at the start. Um, they were kind of arranged a little bit haphazardly. But then okay, I well, think nerve they, is one of the spindle cell proliferations for sure. I think smooth muscle, though, I looked at it a little smooth closer. Smooth muscle is another one. Cigar shaped. Yeah, about this little structure right there. I mean, it looks a lot like a little rectal pili muscle, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. There's another one that looks like a little muscle fascicle. And then if you're in higher magnification, yeah, you can see that the nuclear kind of blunt ended, cigar shape like that. Sometimes they'll have a periapical vacuole like that. That's helpful. So, yeah, smooth muscle. So, what's the diagnosis? So, if it came from a pilar muscle, then a uh, pyloliomyoma? Can you tell that just looking at the morphology? Um, What's the differential? So pyloliomyoma is one. What are the other lyomyomas? They're just lyomyoma. Lyomyoma. <laughs> um, well, basically, we, we talk about that. We say, okay, what's well, the subtype of lyomyoma? Well, one's pilar. What's the other main one? Um, what if it looked like a round ball? A couple of clefts in it here and there. Maybe it was adjacent to a blood vessel. Oh, angio. Angio -lyomyoma. Good. And what if it came from the nipple or the scrotal area? Um, Basically, there's kind of a lyomyoma of erectile tissue. And in those areas, you can get lyomyomas that develop wherever there's a lot of erectile tissue. It's analogous to a pyolyomyoma, so we call it a dartotic lyomyoma. Now, what if you saw one mitotic finger here? Would you call it a lyomyosarcoma? Uh, no, they can have a few, I think. They can have an occasional one, yeah, and the cells can sometimes be a little bit pleomorphic. If you saw this patient, would you say, adios, amigo, we'll see you next year, or is there anything you kind of have to worry about with them? Uh, I think you have to watch them pretty close. I don't know how easily it transforms into... Yeah, not usually. Like they, they rarely can degenerate into malignant. That's pretty uncommon. But there's one entity that you need to be worried about if they got multiple lyomyomas. Yeah, and there's a syndrome, the Reed syndrome. What all do you get? Reed syndrome. Uterine fibroids and kidney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you get kidney so. problems, kidney mm -hmm. cancers. And then notice that these lesions can be somewhat agmenated, like this. It can be like a segmental lyomyoma, which is kind of an interesting. It's probably a, a Post-psychotic somatic mutation. Maybe have, have a couple of slides. So anyway, just remember reads is probably the most important one. Then mutated fumarate hydratase. The boards love to ask things about that. Okay. Do you will these recur if you don't get them completely out? They can. Okay. They can. So if somebody has a painful one, you really need to make sure you get a good margin around it. Uh, you don't have to get a really large margin, but you know, if you want it to not come back, okay, get it out. They can recur. Okay. <clears throat> and also inject them with Botox. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They inject them with Botox for what symptoms? Or? Yeah. And they usually get kind of painful when they get uh, cold. Okay. And so uh, you can inject them with, uh, with Botox sometimes. Okay. This is 421. It might be cheaper coming out. This doesn't go with this case. This is not I mean, this, yeah. this is the wrong box? No, it's it's wrong list. Wrong list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll look at this. I know what it is, so we don't have to <coughs> get this. So who wants to give this one a go? Alright, so this is shared biopsy. Um, I looked at this for a while. I I'm trying to figure out location. I mean the Kind of epidermis is necrotic. Yeah, I was struggling to tell if this was actually mucosal or not. Yeah. Um, okay. I ultimately thought it was. Yeah, you were ultimately correct. Um, you said the epidermis is necrotic. Well. Is it really necrotic? Um, Most of it's pretty viable here. Okay. Sorry, I asked for hyperplasia. I'm regular. 
Yeah, it does have some abnormalities up here. What do we see yeah. up here? There's this is, um, kind of that looks like ballooning degeneration almost. Um, but the main thing that I saw was this kind of vacuoid areas. Yeah, this is um, a. What are these cells here? I mean, there's a lot of red cells. I think most of them are neutrophils. Neutrophils. <clears throat> neutrophils. So you're right, this is a mucous membrane. There's abundant neutrophils. And we see like this many neutrophils with some spongiosis. We refer to that as what? I know. Spongiform pustule formation. So this is neutrophils in the upper part of the epidermis. So what diseases give you neutrophils in the epidermis like this? Uh, psoriasis, can yep. candida, Good. Uh, tinea, uh, infantigo, I already said candida. Yeah, Syphilis. so you, you kind of narrowed it down pretty quickly. So which ones of those did you favor in this case? I looked for Canada for a while because I thought it was the mouth. Yeah, it is the mouth. Uh, didn't see any, but still said Canada. <laughs> okay. Well, let's say you did a PAS stain in the culture and everything else, it was negative. Uh, psoriasis. Yeah. And what do you call psoriasis when it's on the tongue and it kind of looks like annular? Geographic Yeah, tongue. geographic tongue. Good. So, do you believe, as I do, that geographic tongue is a variation of psoriasis? Uh, sure. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think it's, I was taught that this is probably one of the variants of pustular psoriasis. What are a couple of other variants of pustular psoriasis? Um, I mean, you can get. You guys back up every time in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alpha, Impetigo, Hepatoformis. Um, and then yeah, you can I'll just get von uh, Zumbush. Yeah, generalized. Pustular. What's what's the the name that we can no longer say that disease? What are they calling that now? Sterile arthritis with pustulosis. Sterile arthritis with pustular psoriasis. I think it's probably a better term. You can't say Ryers. Yeah. Oh, really? Used to be called Ryers since he's a he's Nazi. Nazi. No. Oh. Damn his name. <laughs> You know, everybody says you can't say writers, but they still say it. So you're not going to say it, don't say it. Just call it sterile pustulosis with arthritis, which is really, you should call sterile, it should be called sterile, it should be called pustular psoriasis with arthritis. Is what it really should be called. So other than the fact that I don't see a lot of plasma cells, why, why not syphilis here? Uh, syphilis theoretically could do this. Yes, yeah, syphilis can give you just about any pattern in the skin. It's a little bit unusual to Spongiform pustular change in syphilis, so that wouldn't be my top choice. Okay. You could always consider syphilis. But even if you did see plasma cells because you're on the mucosal site, that doesn't mean that it's really syphilis. And there actually are a few plasma cells in here. Not a lot, but there's a couple here and there. You know, this is an example of geographic tongue, which I believe is a variation of one of the forms of pustular psoriasis. Alright, good. So we have a shape biopsy. Yes. What's the pattern? The pattern is uh, lichenoid. Good. Lichenoid. What kind of cells are in here primarily? Mostly lymphocytes. Good. Lymphocytes. The epiderm is, is. Well, there are some areas that look like some crust or. Hyperkeratosis. A little bit of that, yeah. yeah. Mostly relatively unremarkable. Yeah. Then there is this uh, red blood cell extravasation. Good. And, um, but there is no striking interface change. So that would put me away from pityriasis form of dermatosis. Yeah, good. So probably not pityriasis like an oidy. So it's really not very much interface change, there's no dyskeratosis. There are lymphocytes and extravasated red cells. Yeah. Really no neutrophils in the cornified layer. Those cornified layer of pterosis like is usually pretty crusted. Mm -hmm. Scale crust, we don't really see that here. And then 
other thought was uh, BLK, but okay. usually... Okay, good idea. But usually, isn't it like a little bit more like thicker? Like the I mean, usually you'll see features of the background solar letigo because that's really all the BLK is is a solar letigo plus inflammation. We really don't have much of that here, so and I wouldn't say it couldn't be that, but that'd be kind of funny because there's no solar alteration at all, and there's really no classic solar letigo like change to the background. And the other thing I mean you can think of is like uh, barbaric dermatosis. Like, yeah. But the thing is that I didn't see much, uh, like. Hemocytering, like to think this is an old process. Does it have to be old? No, but just in case. <laughs> I mean, many times we, we get like. What's it called when it's when it's old and instead of having red cells, you've got a lot of uh, sideropages mostly. What's the name of it then? Um, I'm not sure where you're going. Like, Anybody know? Like, like an aureus. Yes, like an aureus. Gold. Mm -hmm. It looks golden brown. So this probably isn't lichen aureus, but it is lichenoid yeah. PPD. What's the other name for that? That's the lichenoid is Gujaro Bloom. Yeah, Gujaro Bloom. Okay, and that's kind of what it might look like. Usually they don't look like lichenoid papules. They can look very similar to like Schamberg's or any of the other forms of PPD. What are some of the other forms? Oh, you have Lucas and Capitanakis, which is the extent of those forms. Yeah, you get spongiosis and that is widespread. Yeah, you have uh, um, not Mayakis. What's the most common? The Jockeys is one form, yeah. you're right. The most common is Chambers. Chambers. Mm -hmm. most common. Yeah. Good, so there's like about three or four of them Ducas, Capitanakis, this, Chambers, Mayakis, Purpura, Purpura, and there's the yeah, other yeah. So you know, just make sure that, and the most important thing is that you don't confuse this with vasculitis. Let's talk about this being a capillaritis. I'm not so sure that it really is a capillaritis. I don't, I don't think it is. I don't like that term. It sort of makes it seem like it's vasculitis, like there's fibrin. You never see fibrin in the walls of the blood vessels in this. You never see it with this equation. If you see that, you're probably dealing with an early lesion of LCD. Because those can look petechial and can kind of simulate this cluster. Do you think all of these variants of PPD need to be lumped together, just like in psoriasis, or are you okay? No, I think they probably are a family of diseases. I think they're the same basic process. So I think they are kind of lumped together. Okay. Right. Good example of this. Here we have... We have a little bit of epidermis there. It's mainly yeah. dermis and some cartilage. Okay. And so it could be kind of ulcerated because it's lacking in epidermis. Or it it could, could be, yeah, or, or maybe even just this, some of this could be artifactual. Well, it looks like they, what kind of biopsy do you think they did here? Like scoop? Well, it, or maybe or like an ideal incision, or it could know. be like a punch, uh, something like that. Really shallow punch. Yeah, what part of the body do you think you're on? Probably the ear. Yeah, if they did a really deep punch, they might actually pierce the person's ear, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they may have wanted to be a little bit a little careful of that. Right, so do you think it's an inflammatory or a neoplastic process? It's inflammatory. Yeah, I think it is too. And not really a classic inflammatory skin disease, though, is it? No. No. It's not. So where's the pathology? So I thought I saw some granulation tissue, or kind of, there's not a whole lot of tissue here other than the cartilage, but I think there's maybe a little bit there. There's a little bit of dilated blood vessels and some possible subtle granulation tissue mm -hmm. response at the periphery. I'll, I'll agree with that, but where's the main pathology? Is it out here? Is it it's here? In the cartilage. It's in the cartilage. Mm -hmm. Is this normal cartilage? No. No, it's not. It looks inflamed. Or well, is it really not inflamed? inflamed? Mm, it just looks odd. <laughs> it's a it's little not bit a really more good clear. Pathologic it's term. A Let's kind of think of something more medically correct than just odd. The cells are more prominent, a little darker, staining more 
kind of they're cleared out in a way. Yeah. Well, there's some evacuated yeah. cells. Maybe they're sort of degenerating chondrocytes here. What about this? Is this normal cartilage right here? It doesn't look, no. It no, looks... it's not. No, no residual chondrocytes are no all kind of dead. They just mm -hmm. turned into this bluish, pinkish, amorphous material. Okay, so if you basically injected hyaluronic hyaluronidase mm -hmm. in here, it might dissolve the cartilage and it might kind of turn into something like this. Okay, and then you've got some fibroplasia at the periphery. You've got some of these blood vessels at the periphery. So what do you think the diagnosis is here? I mean, I thought of chondrodermatitis nodularis helices, but... Is that... I would also think of, like, relapsing polychondritis. Maybe, okay, but now I what do we like see in relapsing polychondritis? More inflammation? Yes. You have lymphocytes that actually attack the cartilage from outside in. Mm -hmm. So lymphocytes should be all over this, and there's none. None. So probably not that. And it's not, and does counterdermatitis usually give you degeneration no, of doesn't. the cartilage centrally? No, no, it doesn't. So what else can do this? A weathering? Yeah, it's really kind of more of but a that's the same thing. Right? I just think yeah. about yeah. I'm not. Anybody have any idea what this is? It's a condition known as pseudocyst of the oracle, which is a manifestation of trauma to the cartilage. You get degeneration of the cartilage centrally, and then eventually this turns into fibroplasia, and then you lose the ear becomes. It looks like a cauliflower. This is actually a, a very early lesion. If you get the later lesions, like the boxers and the wrestlers get, they get the cauliflower ears. So that's the classic uh, clinical presentation. What would you think you would get if you put a uh, scalpel in the middle of this? What do you think would happen? Um, it would grab again. This stuff would drain out. Okay. It's kind of a gelatinous, oily, kind of degenerated cartilage material. It's probably hyaluronic acid that drains out. So if you, if you were to stick a needle in that stuff, you'd get a, you would get a discharge from it. So this is very, very common in wrestlers and boxers, nuns actually. Some people don't usually get this. They usually get chondrodermatitis. But, nuns? Yeah, I need to get chondro from wearing the wimples. But this is, uh, this is really due to trauma. I guess if the nun got their ears slapped by the mother superior, maybe they did. So this is more acute trauma. Yes. Okay. Versus like CNH is chronic pressure trauma. Right. This is deep trauma. Okay. You know, head, neck kind of hold, you know, choker hold, whatever they do, the rest of it. They get boxed in their ears. That's what happens when you get that. Usually you don't get a lot of inflammation. You can. But this is different than, than, uh, Relapsing polychondritis, where you get all lymphocytes that are attacking the cartilage. Here, this is a traumatically induced process. Okay. So, now you've seen that. So, with traditional steroids, does it get. Not so much. I mean, you can try that, but really, not a whole lot that really works for it. Okay. What about hyaluronidase? Well, it's already got hyaluronic acid degeneration already. So, I'm not sure I'd want to add to it. Really possible. Here in the slide. I'm yeah, sure. so that, that also showed up on the uh, digital copy as well. Um, it's punch biopsy on non volar skin. Um, the I kind of go top from bottom here. Um, the epidermis to me looked pretty regular, um, regular from corneum, uh, not too thick. I saw a lot of dilated blood vessels that were very superficial, so I was trying to think of the location here. Um, I didn't see any hair follicles, but I'd see some echine glands. So. I was going with maybe lower leg. Um, it's not terribly sun damaged, but there is some basal pigment to it, so this could be a darker skinned person. Uh, going down through the reticular uh, dermis, I saw um, some fat that looked like maybe it was a little high riding, and then I also saw some kind of thickened collagen here in the middle. And then deeper down, the fat looked a little, I don't know if inflamed is the right word, or just kind of atypical. Um, 
it looked like it was kind of degenerating in areas, like the fat cells didn't look healthy. Yeah, these are these normal lipocytes here? No, they're not. But what do you call that right here? A big one? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Anybody know? It's called a fat microcyst. Micro it's almost like an emphysema where you get blebs uh, in the lung. Okay. You know, these, these normal fat cells will dump into these things. They become these larger little pseudocystic structures mm -hmm. called fat microcysts. Mm -hmm. And notice you got some foamy histiocytes here. Yes. Got some eosinophils. Oh, I didn't see that. Histiocytes. You got some fibroplasia. But this is not the world's best biopsy of this because we're just barely into the fat. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason that. You didn't get a lot of fat here. They didn't take an incisional biopsy. They did a punch. They were hopeful that they'd get enough out to make a diagnosis, and they did. What do we call this change? Um, that's the lipodermatosclerosis, um, or the um, window, what's that called? Window pane fat. I haven't heard that one. It's like the frosted window pane, <laughs> something of the fat. It's membranous fat books. necrosis is another term that we use in pathology. So membranous fat necrosis, but window pane. Um, yeah, there was there's a line somewhere. Frosted window pane. Frosted okay. window pane. Yeah. I'll buy that. I mean, it kind of looks like frosty beer glass or something there, maybe. Yeah, so perhaps. If you did a Sudan black stain, this stuff gets highlighted here. <clears throat> so it's called membranous fat necrosis. And that's very characteristically seen with lipodermatosclerosis or sclerosing paniculitis. What's the cause of that? Chronic stasis. Yeah. Cause it. And these are really stasis altered blood vessels. Here. So that is the diagnosis. What does this look like clinically? Inverted champagne bottle. Now, does it look like that early? No, early, early ones that I have seen just looks like can have overlying stasis dermatitis. And then it can just be kind of an integrated area. Yeah, kind of a reddish integrated area, and it's it can be like a, kind of almost like a numular plaque. Um, it's usually not diagnosed early. <clears throat> People see it, they don't know what it is. They think it's maybe a lymphoma or something, and you biopsy and it shows features of this. It's just early. This is what has been present for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is that sort of white and cribber form also in there? It's scarred. But is that sort of a typical of the scar appearance? Um, no, I think it's kind of like the, it's almost like the atrophy blanche Good. scar. Excellent. Looks like atrophy blanche, and that's one of the things that you can get with stasis change. You get stasis associated with vasculitis, stasis associated with atrophy blanche. It looks very much like that. If you were to buy a scene in one of those quiet areas, you might actually see that. I think you've got a couple of photos. And there's several different, uh, a lot of different bad things that happen with stasis. Obviously, stasis dermatitis, this, lipovasculitis, you get a lot of sclerotic change, a pseudomorphia change, you get stasis ulcers. You know, so, a lot of things can happen with bad stasis, stasis cellulitis. So, anyway, that's this is a nice example of hypodermitis, sclerodermaformis, or lipodermatosclerosis. I would say too nice, but it's at least it's diagnostic. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at this uh, shape biopsy. Okay. Um, uh, there, it looks like there's a little acanthosis centrally. Um, I wrote down for this one that it, it looked like there's a lot of um, blood vessels forming, but maybe I confused the last one with this one. Maybe the so. granulation tissue up here. <coughs> I don't that. Um, yeah, maybe that's what it was. Um, so I saw that there were lots of um, <coughs> vessels um, that they were forming in the dermis. Um, I didn't, appre I thought maybe initially a uh, Kaposi sarcoma, um, but I didn't see the promontory sign. Um, it's pretty small and yeah. well circumscribed. It's got some crust. So yeah, yeah. This, I yeah, agree. So I think it's just kind of a little granulation tissue kind of response here. Was there anything else in the tissue that struck your eye? Um, so there isn't an obvious, despite the granulation here, there is an obvious ulceration. Um, hmm. Ulceration? Yeah. It's intact. Mm -hmm. No, there, there is not. Oh, there's not. Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to say. Um, so there's granulation issue but without any ulceration um, overlying it. Um, the infiltrate looks lymphocytic, too acidic. Um, and there, 
What about this thing? Um, is that normal? No. Um, what is that? It almost looks like, I want to say the cartilage or bone. Um, well, it's got these little small cellular structures in yeah. it, right? Yeah. It's got cell walls around these little things. So if we were to stain that in PAS, it would be positive. <laughs> Because it's got a carbohydrate type component to it. Okay. Um, carbohydrate and like muscle or nerve or. That doesn't look like anything. Anybody have any idea what this is? It's not human. Oh, splinter. it's a plant. Oh, it's yes, a splinter. It's splinter. <laughs> it's not human. This is vegetable. This is a vegetable, animal, mineral, or this would be vegetable. <laughs> So this is okay, a so splinter. Body. Yeah. Oh, first, body I, at first I thought it was suture, and then I went closer and it wasn't refractile. Yeah. How can you tell it's not refractile? It might actually the be computer. refractile. You know, I, I uh, think it is refractile. It looks like it. Yeah, Jack. Yeah. 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 When you take the photo, you should be able to see like this, the central area in the hole that has like the refractile material of the actual suture versus this. It's just like cleared out spaces. Yeah, I've never seen a suture with all these. These are little small cells. So like if you take your celery and, you know, <laughs> cut that in cross section, it's got all those little <laughs> tiny little cells that are flowing Blue, through the things. So, yeah, xylem and flow and all those kind of good old things you learn about. <laughs> Botany, what's it in college? There's also some, some uh, history sites surrounding this thing. So this is just a splinter reaction. And the granulation tissue is, is probably the host trying to, to, to gradually get this thing to be transepidermally eliminated. And so if you didn't see that, I just thought uh, without that, it was just said by Parago or LSC. Yeah, with you the, could say that. Like like that. Yeah, like and then I saw it. Yeah, and thought, yeah, all sorts of like excoriation right. granulation tissue beneath it. This is that's just a reaction. This yeah. is the main pathology of it. It's a Ooh. splinter reaction. Oh, okay. yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> that looks like, that looks like, that that looks like, like something out of Pulp Fiction or like to <laughs> torture them or something. Okay. All right. I just want to go. Uh, very thin shea biopsy here. Yeah. Um, epidermis, a little bit of acanthosis. Yes. Good. Um, Does it look inflammatory or neoplastic? Uh, just a little bit of inflammation. Yeah, yeah, so probably not really an inflammatory process, but this is going to be super subtle, and if they shave it, well, shame on them, because we're not going to make much of a diagnosis on a shave biopsy if this is inflammatory or superficial. But maybe they were looking for something in the epidermis. The epidermis is abnormal. So if it's an inflammatory process, it's either some kind of a purely epidermal inflammatory condition, or it's it's maybe a neoplasm involved in the epidermis. Um, so just a little, I don't really know if I'd call it superficial perivascular, just a little bit of inflammation there, or just dark cells. Yeah, um, this side's here. Yeah. I think I did see quite a bit of pigment in this one. Yes. So definitely at the junction, but then I think in the epidermis in this one as well, I saw, yeah, so this, so I said pigment and... Are these uh, cells in the epidermis normal in their appearance? No. No. What's wrong with them? Uh, they're large and Good. going too high up. Like well, the there's, they're large. There's, there's an increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. Mm -hmm. Very large nucleus, limited cytoplasm. That cell's pycnotic, hyperchromatic nucleus, so it's dying. Mm -hmm. Cells are really atypical. There's a mitotic figure there present throughout the epidermis and there's acanthosis in the epidermis as you noted mm -hmm. so what's the diagnosis melanoma well that's one or, thing to think about all right um, just a dysplastic mucus then well that's a second thing to think about <laughs> notice that there's that these cells have uh, desmosomes They're closely opposed to one another, and there's full thickness atypicality here. Not just individual cells, and there's no nesting of cells. Uh -huh. So what's yet another thing to think about? 
think the pigment's throwing it off. Yeah, I think it's too that. much melanocytic. Um, without the pigment, I would think the NF. Well, um, there's no lymphocytes out here, though. These are just atypical keratinocytes throughout the epithelium. Just an AK. Okay, now you're getting closer because you're in the atypical malignant keratinocytic process, but it's not just focal, right? It's diffuse over a broad front. So if you get diffuse atypical keratinocytic proliferation with full thickness atypia over a broad front, what's the diagnosis? Uh, what are my case trying to? I, I didn't think this looked like SEC. It is SEC. Okay. This is Bowen's disease, squamous uh, carcinoma okay. in situ, and it's pigmented. Squamous or personal inside to, which we see on occasion, like this. You'll see this in dark skin patients, and they get sent in as rule out melanoma a lot of times. So it's a variation of a type of, of Bowen's or squamous or personal inside to. They can be pigmented. So you have to make sure that you don't overcall something like this as melanoma. So full thickness atypicality over a broad front. You know, these can be associated with radiation, arsenic, HPV, especially HPV if they're in the groin area. They can get macular brown, uh, basically groin papulosis lesions, pigmented bones. So anyway, just remember that. They're often seen in dark skin patients. So if you get bones in a dark skin patient, it's, it's likely to be pigmented. Okay. Do you think it's also more likely to be HPV-induced, since they're dark-skinned? Not, not always. Not always. Because sometimes you see, like, in the arm or the leg. Okay. Or so I don't Sounds know. That okay. All right. <clears throat> so this is a bunch of uh, neoplastic process. Good. <clears throat> um, here's these uh, kind of orb-like structures in uh, the papillary dermis that are kind of recapitulating hair follicle in right. some of the areas. Like it's kind of almost emanating from a little dilated. Yeah, there's a central bell cyst. there. Yeah, good. Um, I thought that this, with that architecture, and especially in this cut, the other cut not so much, I thought it kind of fit with trichofolliculoma. Um, now what's not great about trichofolliculoma? There's... I thought this could have been the central, the, the periphery of it looked more like, um, it looked more like tricholemma. Like Good. this looks like tricholemma differentiation. Tricholemma differentiation. The, What's the usual uh, differentiation we see in a trichofolliculoma? Um, outer root sheets. Well, really actually more inferior portion of the polyp. Okay. It's smaller from, so if you saw like a lot of these, you would favor Trichofolliculum. Here we've got more kind of tricholimal, which is outer root sheath differentiation here, and they're kind of these large bulbous aggregations as opposed to these small little miniaturized germs like we see in a couple of areas. So what gives you that pattern? It looks like a cyst, but instead of having the small inferior portion of follicles radiating from the center with a small wispy white tuft of hair, like you've seen a trichoflick, what gives you, it's almost like a cyst, and you biopsy it looks like this. Anybody know? Cyst. So pilar, meaning follicle, sheath, acanthoma, meaning like a tumor. Yeah. So it's a pilar sheath, acanthoma. So it's in the same sort of spectrum, if you will. Or I thought that was just semantics based on the... No, not really. Not really. This is a little different ballgame. I mean, it's it's separated out, so I wouldn't just say, oh, you know, it's trichofolic, because they could put this on the board exam and have trichofolic as a choice. They don't have one that says semantics as a choice there. <laughs> I'd choose them. You have to choose. <laughs> so it so, uh, also looks like the... Um, it looks a little bit like a, pilot, like a uh, dilator port of winer, but you get more of these acanthotic areas here and more tricholemal differentiation. So it's a, it's a spectrum between those three entities. It's not, they're probably not really a spectrum, but that's a way to think about it. Okay, so that's kind of what they look like. They're pretty nondescript. They look kind of like little cysts, cyst, but you should know that this is separated out from the other entities histologically. On the other section on the slide, 
Could they just give you that on the boards? Probably not. Okay. They just, probably just give you that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that. This one you could say it could be the side of it. Okay. But they probably give you one that you can actually see it. So it's, it's nice. It's not very nice. I haven't changed anything. Okay, okay, what about this? Well, this one. Pretty simple, straightforward. Yeah. Schnell diagnosis, There's a, right? Yeah. Punch biopsy with some non human material. <laughs> <laughs> is this a splinter? Vegetable? It's not. It's a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not celery. It's. So, let's, so what is it? Is it mineral? What is it? It looks like, a, well, it's like borrowing under the, like in the stratum corneum, so it looks like scabies. Yeah. So if you were going to write in the exam question to kind of fool your colleagues, right, that's a nice little experiment to do, thought experiment. What other things would you put down as a choice, as a distractor? Um, uh, I probably could play with Tonga. Tonga penetrance? Yeah. Would that look anything like this? No. No, that's way down here. What does it look like? Uh, like deeper, uh, basically larger and more invaginated, maybe. It's, it's more. way bigger, right? Yeah. What is a tongue of penetrans organism? It's actually? a flea. It's a flea. Yeah, it's a little small sand flea. Okay, what uh, what else would you put in I would play with larva migrants. Yeah, would that live here? No. Where does that live? Uh, I think it would live in the dermis. It's about in this area. Yeah. It's kind of hard to find. You have to biopsy ahead of the red sort of serpiginous area. By the time it's serpiginous <laughs> and red, it's way ahead of it. Because that's an inflammatory reaction that's left. That's like biopsy the vapor trail to see what the jet is that's ahead of it. So you can't, you got to get the jet if you don't know what, what's causing the vapor trail. The other one would be a tick. Okay, tick. Obviously not that. What else would you put here that really could fool somebody? Um, bum, bum, bum. It's in a follicle here. Oh, yeah. So what would you put? A hair. <laughs> well, you have to be really stupid to choose. <laughs> well, that's a hair. How about a demodex? Okay. That might fool but somebody. Demodex are smaller than that. Well, they're also, you, they are, you're right, they're smaller. They kind of fit in this yeah. area here. They're kind of elongated and more. It's a hypertrophic you know, demodex. And elliptical. <laughs> they don't live in the corner by layer. So, yeah, I mean, that'd be another one you could choose. You could also maybe uh, choose like a non scabetic mite. Those don't burrow into the scale like this. So, you know, this is scabies. You've got it right. Pretty straightforward. Did everybody get it right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's like the first month residency. <laughs> okay, number 149. Something subtle here. Okay, here we have a shave biopsy. Um, the epidermis. Looks there's basket leaf stratum corneum. Epidermis looks pretty normal. There's a little pigmentation. Yeah, it's hyperpigmented at the base. It might be within the realm of normal. We're not sure. But there's quite a lot of dark pigment in the superficial dermis. Yeah, what is that dark pigment? It looks black. Okay. Kind of black. So. And there's, it could be pigment dropout, but it could also be, I didn't really see a lot of granulomas around it, but it almost looks like tattoo pigment. Well, let's see. But could it's be, quite could dark. It, could it, also be be, it could just be melanin. Yeah. Yes. So if it's melanin, how are you going to tell that from, say, tattoo pigment? Melanin's going to have little granules. And there are granules, mm -hmm. and it's also, no, notice it's not really refractile. No, it's not. So it's not hemocytorin. Yeah, not hemocytorin. Probably not iron containing at all. Yeah. And it's pretty much just black. It's not kind of grayish black or anything like yeah. that. So mostly melanin. Really dark. So these are melanophages. So what's the, what's the diagnosis? For the you know, pigmented, I was thinking pigmented perchoric. If it's pigmented perverted dermatitis, but I don't pigment? see extra oxidative red blood cells. Yeah, that would that be hemocytorin. So this is melanin. Mm -hmm. so oh, this, right, never mind. There's a lot of melanin in the in the epiderm in the dermis. So I mean, a, there could have been an interface here. Possibly, you're looking at something that's very late stage at this point. 
So what do you call that? Post-inflammatory? Yeah, post-inflammatory. <laughs> post-inflammatory pigmentary alteration. And we don't know for sure if there's hyper or hypopigmented, because mm -hmm. in hypopigmentation, you also see the same pattern. The main cause of the pigmentation is the epidermis. Mm -hmm. You get lots of melanophages in you know, people that have post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. So it's really the main cause of the pigmentation is, is what's remaining in the epidermis. So there's a lot of different causes of this. The EDP, the burnout lichen planus, could be you know, some kind of drug reaction that was there that went away. So this was happens to the EDP this time. EDP sometimes will give you a little bit of acural alteration of the e junction, but you don't have to see much of it. The EDP is more of a clinical pathologic diagnosis. And biopsy that just shows basically post inflammatory which is not specific change for EDP histologically. Okay. The last one, also a very good, nice, <coughs> classic one. Yes, this is a, um, a nodule that on first glance looks like cartilage in the middle. Um, I didn't see epidermis around it, so I don't know if it's shelled out or if I'm just missing epidermis. No, um, I think you're right. I think it probably shelled out here. I um, saw cartilage, I saw fat around it. I saw a lot of kind of pale blue slash like light purple cells. And I was trying, um, actually, I was still in the cartilage differential. So I was trying to think of where this came from. So um, I ended up seeing mixed tumor because I thought that it had just a lot of different features to it. Do you think it's benign or malignant? I think it's benign. Very much yeah, so. It shelled, shelled out, out yeah. around. So it's got all the classic features of benign. Okay, so you thought it was cartilage differentiation, and you're right. So what if you're looking down there and they have a thing like osteochondroma, cartilaginous differentiation, and giant cell tumor of tendon sheath, I didn't see like ossifying fibromyxoid tumor, which you've never heard of. Nope, cross that one off. Um, I did not see the, the florette cells, I guess, of the tendon sheath one. Um, and I also haven't seen a lot of cartilage in those. Yeah, you can get that actually. It's okay. fairly unusual. So what's what's the feature that really makes a diagnosis for you? These. Why is it called mixed tumor? Uh, I would, I think, because it has fat and it has cartilage and. Well, has... forget the fat part. He's less just a, that's actually not part of this, but it's got this plus this. Yeah, so it's the sweat ducts here. Yeah. What's the other name for mixed tumor in the skin? Um, chondroid syringoma. Yeah, chondroid syringoma. So these look like little African glands here. So you need those components to see uh, mixed tumor. Notice a little necrosis on moss and we commonly see with background differentiation, totally benign clue. What's where is this also found besides the skin? So in bone? Uh, not so commonly in bone. Another place in the head and neck area, though, that is commonly seen. Oh. Nope. Uh -huh. Salivary gland. Okay. Mixed tumor of oh, salivary nice. glands. Parotid mixed tumor, mixed tumor yeah. minor salivary glands. Uh, also known as pleomorphic adenoma mm -hmm. in that situation sometimes, where they get mostly the uh, epithelial component. So it's just another variant, another location. So just remember that these things are also seen in the mouth. Condition. Do you have to size these? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, if you have a mass in the parotid, you need to know what it is. No, they the rarely can thing. degenerate into malignancy. Rarely. So that's one of the reasons people like to get these out because sometimes they can gradually degenerate. But that's really rare. Mostly just benign. They can usually thought to be cysts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.